Welcome back, Farah. Thank you. Uh, so happy to have you back in Dubai uh, for your solo show, Toy World, at the Third Line, opening tonight. So the last show we had together was at the Third Line in 2019, um, which was called Arrival. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we are, arriving in 2024. Uh, a lot has happened. Uh, the world is a very different place. Uh, and I feel that this show uh, is referencing a lot of what has happened, but also what has happened uh, yeah. before. So tell me a little bit about the new body of work and um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so crazy because I feel like a Minar, um, which is the film that Arrival was based around, was Fine. such a massive departure point for me just in terms of learning so much about um, long-form filmmaking and how to really build a world of photographs around an idea rather than saying, right. I'm going to photograph this or I'm going to photograph that. But right. actually, they're, they're so connected by kind of concept. Right. Um, so it's kind of exciting to come back five years later and it's not about jitneys or it's not about haunting right. or possession, um, but it's kind of about the things that are haunting us collectively in a much more insidious and, um, and quiet way. So I think that for, for this show, I wasn't trying to come up with an idea and say, okay, this is what the show is going to be about. It was more that um, I was looking at the photographs that I had already been making, not just as a photographer who is compulsively noticing things, right. but also um, a journalist. Uh, there's, there's a lot of work in the show that I've shot on assignment. Right. Um, you know, but I, I think it's really, it's focused around that everyday looking. And what I started to see when I was working and, and um, you know, kind of leading up to the show was a real sense of fear and frustration and in an almost cyclical way. Um, you know, I, I, was, I was meeting a lot of people who were, you know, in, in the U.S. who were very afraid of the Arab world for right. extremely... Um, Right. Yeah, for, for extremely bizarre reasons. And yeah, but also I, I feel that that's something that's ha been happening. I yeah. mean, I feel that, you know, post 9-11, which was not even really the beginning of, yeah. of it all, um, there was this fear of, you know, who, who are, you know, what's happening. And I feel yeah. that very much that the third line was a, in reaction, actually, to 9-11. I mean, for me, it was, you know, so I feel that, again, this show really hit home for me as well, because I thought that a lot of the imagery and a lot of the, what you're talking about, this sort of, um, the fears, um, but also what's happening beyond the images or, you know, how they came, that that really hit home for me, so yeah. Yeah, definitely, and I think actually a lot of the, um, a lot of the references in the show come from, even before 9-11, come from the right. Gulf War. Right. Uh, and in a way it's like maybe a, a self-portrait because I was born right well, before the end of the first Okay, can war. I, can I, I did some dates, so can I t yeah, say, okay, so yeah, so, so, um, yeah, because we were talking a little bit about the Gulf War, and then I was, you know, thinking in relation to when you were born, so yeah. you were born February 10th, 1991, uh, a month after the beginning of the Gulf War, which was the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, uh, dubbed Desert Storm, mm -hmm. and it ended on the 28th of February, so literally a few weeks after your birth. Um, it w I mean, it, let's say it ended, but you know, the, the invasion ended and yeah. Iraq retreated, um, which actually was 33 years ago tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right, because we're the 27th of Feb. Yeah. Um, and then I was looking at some more dates, because I, I do feel that this is a self-portrait, and I, I, and I want to talk about that a little bit later, but so 9-11, happened in 2001, uh, 23 years ago, Farah is 10. <laughs> yeah, actually, I remember, so, I remember exactly where it was. Yeah. And my mom is on the phone with her siblings in the U.S. because right. we have family who are very close to New York City. And, but, but I did not grasp the enormity of it of course, at the time. Because you're only 10. Yeah. But I feel yeah. like you were sensing it all. That's what I, I, I feel that yeah. is coming through. Yeah. And then there was the 2003 U.S. invasion of Iraq. 21 years ago, Farah is 12. Um, and, and then, and then I, I, I can keep going, but basically Arab Spring, which is the first Arab Spring, 2010, yeah. yeah, Farah is 19. I used to watch, um, when I, I was an art major, and uh, across the street from my apartment next to the School of Art, there 
it was a pizza place that was owned by these really nice Egyptians, and I would go in there and they would always have the news playing. Um, and that was kind of where I got a lot of my non-American coverage of the Arab Spring. Right, so, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so I, I feel that, you know, even though you were very young at the, you know, at the beginning, let's say, of the, and I think that those are moments that really changed uh, well, foreign policy here, I mean, like, what was America's involvement in, in the region, not just America, but also America's involvement. And it, it changed a lot of things in the region for all of us, but you were literally growing up yeah. in that time. And obviously this show has a lot of references to, you know, um, pop culture and, and, and um, you know, how it was influenced by this moment uh, from this point of view, but it was also referenced a lot of um, destruction or ruin. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit more about the, the works in the show and sort of, and you're showing black and white images for the first time, which I thought was interesting because I feel like there's this maturity to where you're at and whereas before you had escaped, let's say, or there's a lot of escapism or like escaping reality or going to these other, or creating other worlds, mm -hmm. this is very real. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this show is rooted in deep, mm -hmm. maybe dark reality. Yeah. 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 I think it's, um, it's a sad show for a sad time. But to answer your question, I think there are uh, there are a lot of references to ruins in the show, whether they're you know kind of um, physical ruins like right. uh, camel bones, right, or architectural ruins like the the photographs of uh, of Jeddah in Jordan. But there's also this again this reference to the kind of um, different cycles of power that play out over long periods of time. Right. And I think there's a lot of discourse right now about the American empire and how we are right. witnessing, hopefully, the beginning of the fall of the American empire. Um, yeah, definitely. And to, you know, to kind of touch a little bit on my personal experience with it. So I, I grew up between here and the US because my mom is Lebanese American. And when, um, right, kind of right around 9-11 and after, when George Bush passed the Patriot Act, right our calls were always, always, always tapped. And so suddenly when we would talk to my aunts and uncles in the US, you would like get calls crossed. Yeah, you, you would, felt you know, it. Yeah, you, had, yeah, you, you felt you, like yeah. you were being watched. We were stopped at the airport all the time. Right. And so it, I really kind of came into an understanding about, right. okay, I, I am somebody who's considered a threat because of my biology. Um, totally. So I think that, you know, it's, it's, and certainly it's not an experience that's unique to me, but I yeah. do think that kind of having to move between those worlds is part of what informs my practice as well because there's constantly this kind of insider outsider complex um, with right. the work so i think because of that implicit knowledge that we were always being watched surveillance remains a really important part of my work and right. i'm also really conscious of the fact that i'm a surveiller when i'm right that's what i was thinking i mean this this show is very much about surveillance but you're also surveil surveilling yeah. the, the world that you live i mean you're looking and attentively looking at at um at the world and, and i you know i suppose that that is what it is to be making images yeah um whereas but then again this show i guess because it's so close to home i feel that it is quite you know biographical as well and and, and, and also you've done a lot of research so yeah you know I wanted to talk about Wingspan, which, um, which is the collage which basically references, or is the guide, let's say, of, of the show, the keys to, yeah, to yeah. your research and how that came about and how long you, you know, like, or have you been making this research um, over years? I mean, obviously you've been living it. So, yeah. but you know, how did that come about a little bit about that process? I mean, I think yeah. um, I, I just want to add or asterisk that for me, research also includes spending three hours a day on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> roughly. I'm always right. like, it's so, more than before, I want to know what the kids are saying. Right. But, um, but actually being on TikTok has really helped me put this show together and all, all shows, really. Right. Um, right. I mean, Yara because, is from, you met on yeah, TikTok. Well, Yara, right. I met on Instagram, but she okay. has a massive um, TikTok and Instagram following as a, uh, a beauty artist and influencer. Right. Yeah. Um, and she's really amazing at what she does. So I met her through social media. Right. Um, and she completely got my idea when, when I was talking about um, all of the kind of mood boards that I'd been putting together of um, Khaliji makeup. Right. you know, uh, from the late 90s and early 2000s, yeah. she had already done a couple of videos referencing those looks. And so that was what we wanted to do to kind of tap into the nostalgia of, yeah. of um, you know, kind of pre 9-11, uh, um, you know, fashion yeah. blogging and, and creativity. Vlogs, so, I remember vlogs. Vlogs, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so I think Wingspan yeah. really brings everything from my studio into the gallery space, which I have been doing in some of the shows that you mentioned yeah. in different ways, but this is the first yeah. time that I really wanted to contain it and, right. um, and really invite people to try to make these references. So there's like eBay paraphernalia, eBay paraphernalia from Desert Storm. There's yes. um, photographs taken by Wilfred Thesiger, who was a British explorer slash spy right. um, in the Arabian Peninsula. Some of the first photographs that we have of this of, area. Yeah, it's from him. Yeah, and his book and, has um, recently come out as well. I, I mean, I think, uh, is it new or is it? I, cause no, no, it's been out. I've, I mean, yeah, someone's read. Yeah, okay, dead, I think someone. But, <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm reading the book. But I'm yeah, reading his book. Yeah, you're reading his book. Yeah. His, um, his kind of memoir. One of the kind of threads in not only in the collage, but also through some of the little interventions in the show yeah. um, are looking at falcons and horses as animals of war and symbols of military power right. over time. Um, there's and the names of many of these sort of technology companies seems come like originate from uh, like Pegasus yeah. is one of them. And, yes, Pegasus. Yeah. Um, and there's a actually one of the one of the things that I've been reading into a lot is um, Israeli exports, and you know, I, I mentioned Israel because they're they're one of the biggest um, cybersecurity powers in the world, if not the biggest. And right. it's kind of it's one of their main exports. The U.S. police is trained by the IDF, oh, wow. and so I think what we're witnessing right now in Palestine is not just um, you know a, a complete denial of humanity. I think it's also a warning of what could come if we allow this to go on. Absolutely. So, you know, when I talk about fear and I talk yeah. about this moment of, in time, I, I want to be really specific about the fact that it is originating in, um, you know, within a kind of empire um, right. that, that harnesses technology to create mass destruction, mass killing, right. um, you know, with both precision and with complete generality. Right. So, um, so I am, you know, kind of calling to mind some of these, you know, extremely morbid uses of technology and visualization. I, that's really interesting. I was reading about the Gulf Wars again, doing some more research on, on this show. But um, what, what I read, which was really interesting, is that um, the Gulf Wars uh, or the CNN's coverage of the Gulf Wars dubbed it the video game wars. Mm -hmm because there was, it was the first time that so much yeah. uh, footage was being seen at the, like the front lines. And, and it made me think about where we are now and the amount of footage that we are all able to see on Instagram yeah. or TikTok. I mean, you know, just yesterday, uh, you know, Aaron Bushnell, who yeah. self, yeah, who basically uh, self-emulated yeah. himself, um, that is captured on video and it's on and it's yeah. on our screens and, and and for me I think you know it you know what what happens is that that is a reality that you know we, we can see all these images but then you can come into a show, show like this and you're the images are very carefully taken and they're telling a story but then what will what will the stories be if we're just following you know what I mean like I feel like we're yeah. kind of creating this this reality as well by having these images that we are all sub so subjected to and seeing and like are constantly, you know. Um, right. I mean, I think it's, it's trying to understand what, at, at which point does an image serve our, um, like at, at what point does it cross over into apathy? And there are a lot exactly. of theorists who have written about this. Right. Um, you know, and, and we, have, we have been using photography for a very long time, yeah, and there are still wars. So, what does that say about humanity? Yeah, um, you basically, know, and, that that history just repeats itself. Yeah, so <laughs> and that, that yeah, that's um, that's yeah. actually I think that's one of the one of the things that um, is referenced a little bit in the the video piece down here, tumbling. Yes, Woman, let's talk about that. Yeah, climbing up a sand dune and and tumbling down it again and again and again, and it's this kind of futile, yeah, um, and extremely annoying <laughs> exercise. Um, right. And uh, the the beginning of the Debussy song Arabesque right. is what I use to make the drone that you hear. Right. Um, so so yes, yeah, so I do think that there are ways that, apart from having this more journalistic or real life practice, I try to right. embody some of the things that are that are coming right. out yeah. in in the work. 
I mean, also in the piece Toy War, I was thinking about Toy War when I thought about video game wars, because <laughs> yeah. your piece Toy War, which is yeah. also an, uh, a new video piece that's in the show, yeah. if you could tell us a little bit about that yeah, and so how that came to be. Yeah. Toy, War, Toy War is basically um, an exercise where I bought a bunch of different toys and I pit them against each other in a war in an enclosed space, um, right. but I kept adding things to them to make them kind of slower. Right. Um, so they're all kind of kinetic toys. They move. There's a cow. There's a woman, um, or like a Barbie doll with a guitar. Um, there's a Spider-Man with a gun for some reason. Spider yeah, that's not a really a strange Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, it's like a yeah. Spider-Man with an AK-47. Um, right. Again, like the militarization of the youth. But exactly, which um, again, yeah. And then uh, what's the fourth? A snake. Um, and shockingly, who do you think wins? The Spider-Man with the AK-47. The cow wins. The cow wins. <laughs> 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 it's like total chance, right? Wow. And they, you know, at the end, they kind of become tangled by a string, and the cow right. is the one that ends up. Uh, the cow was so strong right. that he or she, yeah. um, you know, ended up blocking Spider-Man's movement and getting right. his gun tangled. And right. So that's not something that I could have predicted, but it was exactly. just a total game it's of just chance. What happened. Yeah. And you know, I think the the thing that's really dark for me about Toy War is. Well, first of all, the presence of the gun, um, yeah. you know, with it, with a and it's a toy for a, a kid. It's a toy for a kid. Yeah. But also, you know, when you when you talk about Desert Storm being the first video game war, yeah. A lot of the a lot of the people getting drafted by armies are right. barely out of school. Right. Um, and there's a photograph. There's a black and white photograph in the show of a young marine that I, I took in Boston. Right. Um, and you know, you can still see his kind of hormonal like, acne on right. his face. You know, so a lot of a lot of people, a lot of kids. They leave school. They they go from playing video games to suddenly being in them. You know, being um, the people who are wielding extremely extremely deadly weapons. And how do you contend with that? 